watching on DHTV channel 341. I'm Nina Murray. And I'm Sandy Le Cambule, and this is the Dream Week build-up. I don't know if you guys can hear out there, but behind us the band is playing one of my favorite songs of the CRC album. And uh, I've got with me two of the band members, Anesu and Shanae. Can you keep some space so I can chat to them? Thank you. Hi, Anesu. Hi, Shanae. Thank you so much for chatting to me. I know you guys have to get to stage, so we'll keep it quick. <laughs> so, so I wanted to know, how did it feel being part of the whole creative process in, in making of the yeah. CRC album? Oh man, what a, it's such an amazing opportunity to be in such an amazing church as well. Um, the creative process was very difficult, but also so enjoyable. It was so wonderful seeing two churches come together. One church, many locations. Um, yeah, what do you think? I think it was one of the most amazing experiences of our yeah. lives. We had the opportunity to see how um, our leaders reacted and how they could just be in the presence of God and yes. understand what Pastor At has been uh, speaking about. And that was that was amazing. I can't, I can't even, I don't know even what to say to this. I must say, uh, that spirit that Pastor Art yes. that you're talking about, I can feel it when we sing yes. our songs in church. Yes. It's just different. It's yes. like the no anointing just thickens on us. <laughs> moments in the making of the album? All right. Oh, well, um, me and Lufuna went for a trip to Bloemfontein, um, and there basically the band got together and we just started playing and jamming to CRC songs. That's amazing. It doesn't happen often. Um, so we started jamming, and that's how we created our famous Breaking Glorious Engagement. Oh, so wow. yeah, so it was creative, 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 amazing, whatever. <laughs> and you, Shanae? It would be while we were doing the live recording, um, the presence of God yeah. that fell so instantly when um, the break hit in Glorious Engagement, yes. we, we couldn't even stand. It was hard <laughs> to just stand and maintain yeah. ourselves. That was the favorite part of it. Yeah. Uh, Rulani actually said the same thing when we <laughs> interviewed him. He said, there's something in Glorious Engagement called the break. <laughs> yeah, that part. Yes. So um, from serving in church myself, I know how my life has changed. Yeah. What does it mean to you serving in church under the leadership yeah. of Pastor Atta Nareta Vassal? Oh man, CRC is such an amazing church. We have such yes. amazing leaders. Pastor, Pastor Atta and Pastor Nareta, we're so grateful for everything that they do. We, uh, like, I've, it's so amazing being, some, being a part of something that's so much bigger than you are. Um, and yeah, I changed my life. I've become more bold in my life. I'm taking on the world outside of the church. It's amazing. It's amazing. I couldn't have said it better. It is amazing to be part of this. Um, to be invested in Pastor Ad and Pastor Noreta. Yeah. They are our spiritual leaders, yeah. our father and our mother, yes. our spiritual father and mother, and we could not have asked for anything better. Definitely. Amen. Amen. That, amen. Well, you guys, run. Literally. Be blessed. You guys are going to see them on stage, like, right now. Bye. Thank you so much. So, Sandile, do you um, have your CRC album yet? Oh, you got me. I actually have a confession. I haven't got mine yet, but I do have favorites right now, which is definitely going to push me towards getting that album. I'm you, so excited for you it. You better get that soon. So if you like Sandile over here and you don't have your CRC album yet, get to the CRC bookshop or download it on iTunes straight after this session because you're going to miss out if you don't have it. We also have a CRC member all the way from Joburg. Okay, well, not all the way. I mean, it's just right around the corner. She's here, and I think she wants to talk to you. Her name is Danae. Do you want to grab the mic? Exciting. Yes, definitely. So, welcome, Danae. Thank you, Sandile. So, you come all the way from CRC Joburg, I guess, just around the corner. <laughs> and uh, welcome to CRC Pretoria. Oh, thank you. You've been at Dream Week now. How many times have you been here at Dream Week? This is actually my fifth time at CRC Dream Week. Fifth time, not yes. first, but Wow, I've only been to Dream Week three times. This is my third one, so you're a Dream Week veteran right now. Absolutely. That's exciting. Now, I mean, we're in, right in the middle of Dream Week, yes. and we've got more sessions tomorrow, but right now, it's such a strong moment. How are you feeling about Dream Week? I mean, what's been your highlight in the past couple of days? You know what? It's the first Dream Week that I'm actually not serving, so for me, just receiving the energy inside is oh, yeah. absolutely, absolutely amazing, vibrant. The band, the people, it's exciting. just like electric. You cannot get enough of it. That's really exciting. I mean, I love the fact that you're receiving so much. And I know you should leave with so much that has been sowed into your life. Now, tomorrow we still have sessions. Unfortunately, it's the last day tomorrow, but there's still tonight. Yes. What is your expectation in the next couple of sessions we have? Well, we got a lot of expectations, but obviously, you know, God just goes beyond and above 
what you expect. So yes. you can have an expectation and God just comes and meets even more of us. That's actually true. I know God's definitely been exceeding expectations yes. and I know that's going to be exciting. So I hope you enjoyed it and may it continue to be an explosive year. Thank you, Sandy Lake. Thank you, Danae. Now, Nina, welcome back. Thank you so much. So we've got a little bit more than three minutes left until the yeah. next session starts. And I must say, I am so excited to hear what the guest speakers who Pastor Art and Pastor Nereza invited are going to say because you sit in one session and then you just blessed. And then the yeah, next session, you blessed even more. It's and that's just better. how God is, right? He that's just true. keeps on building and building glory to glory. Uh, that's that's really true because I remember I came in the first session. I had expectations. They were, they were exceeded. Second day, same thing. Right now, I do not know what to expect. And I've given it all I've got. And I'm ready, ready, ready to receive a lot. And I'm looking forward to the next couple of sessions. I mean, my voice is gone. Blazer is just creased. <laughs> It's been undignified worship, so I'm looking forward to the next couple of sessions. Well, there's no way better to worship than to be undignified. Anyway, guys, so I just really pray that God will bless you during this session. I pray that you will be filled with fresh joy, with fresh faith, and just, yes, fresh dreams. Wherever you are, I hope you're excited, and I know the next couple of sessions are going to be explosive. Enjoy it. This has been the Dream Week Build-Up, coming to you live from CRC Pretoria.
is good and his love delivered me he gives me strength against the enemy in the power of his name we have victory we have victory come on say amen in the darkness of the night i will be and shine in light join the fight no hiding no hiding let's go victory we have victory sing it out even in the darkness of the night he will be my guide and shine a light i will rise in arms and join the fight no hiding no hiding. Jump, jump. get up since the enemy is falling get up oh. get up say god is victory Clap, clap. 
receiving. There's no doubt we are believing that in this moment we are seeing everything that we've been dreaming.
see us perfect through your son. On the cross is where my heart was won. I am victory cause you overcame. My Jesus died and rose again. And now I stand with arms wide open. Receive your love. I have been chosen. And no my It was for freedom that I am forgiven.
the rising of the sun till it's going down. Your faithfulness is sure, your mercy is ever new. From the rising of the sun till it's going down, your faithfulness is sure, your mercy is ever new. That's why I praise you the way I do. No one knows like I know what you've done for me. That's why I praise you the way I do. Your favor surrounds me like a shield.
Say it again. I will trust you. I will Come on, just lift your hands to your Father tonight in this place. Just keep your hands raised tonight all over this place. Father, we come tonight. You're in Pretoria. They're in Bloemfontein. Watching by way of television on FBN tonight. And we lift our hands to you as the hope of our tomorrow. No matter what we face, no matter what we go through. Our declaration tonight is, Father, we will trust you. Because you promise, you hold our future in the palm of your hand. We thank you, we honor you, and we glorify you in Jesus' name. Come on, everybody that trusts in the name of the Lord Jesus, let us magnify his name tonight here in Pretoria. They're in Bloemfontein. Oh, come on, lift up the name of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Come on, God brought you this far. He's not about to fail you. He's not about to forsake you. He's not about to leave you. He's not about to abandon you. I will trust you. I will trust you. Come on, South Africa. I will trust you. Come on, Pretoria. I will trust you. Come on, Bloemfontein. I will trust you. Come on, grab your wife's hand tonight and say, we will trust you, God. Come on, make a declaration of your faith tonight in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. What a great presence of God here tonight. What an amazing presence of the Lord here tonight. If you love the presence of God, let's give Him one more praise offering. Come on, they're at home tonight. Well, tonight's going to be a special night. Tonight's going to be a beautiful night. I want you to take your seat. And firstly, I want to welcome all our FBN viewers tonight in the name of Jesus. We are so glad you are tuning with us, tuning in with us live from Tswane, Pretoria, the capital of South Africa. We know that your life will be better. We know that God's going to come through this camera. God is going to touch you. God is going to change your life. So right here from Pretoria, we welcome you in Jesus' name. God bless you. Come on, Pretoria. Welcome all the television viewers tonight. A big shout out to Dr. Andre and Jenny. Will you please stand up? Who's making this possible tonight? Come on, let's give them a big, big thank you. They are taking the gospel of Jesus all over Africa, all over Europe, and now in the United States of America. Come on. Who said something good cannot come out of East London or South Africa? Well, people said, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? Can any good thing come out of Bloomingdale? Well, look around you. Look what the Lord has done. And this is only the beginning because you are going to take it further. Amen. Come on, London. Australia. Amen. We have some special guests with us tonight. Firstly, you know, we are living in an urgent hour in South Africa. I think we all know it. Many people who had no hope for the country bought a ticket and left the country. But many people had no option but to stay. And even I could, if I could afford a ticket, I would not leave South Africa because I believe in South Africa and in the future of South Africa. Come on, anybody who believes that we, our future is ahead of us and the best days are ahead of us and South Africa will be a prosperous and a blessed nation. Because together, say it tonight, together, we will build a beautiful South Africa, this rainbow nation that we all love. 
Um, we are grateful for the churches that God is raising up in our nation. At the same time, we are grateful for the leaders because whenever God wants to bring change, God raises up the right man and the right woman. How many girls in the house? So tonight we have an outstanding leader in our nation with his beautiful wife, the leader of the Democratic Alliance. And uh, we honor political leaders in all parties because we are instructed to pray for them. But I honor some people more because they stand for God unashamedly. And not only do they have a political persuasion, but they have a belief persuasion that through Jesus Christ and through right legislation, we can change South Africa and make South Africa a better country for all of us. So we thank God tonight for our leader or the leader of the Democratic Alliance, uh, Musi Maimani. Will you please stand and your beautiful wife, Natalie? Will you please stand? Let's give them a big shout out. We are honored to have you with us tonight. Thank you. Uh, uh, some of the other leaders would be here tonight, but canceled in the final moment. Um, I want to make this clear that we do engage behind the scenes uh, as Christian leaders with political leaders because the solution of South Africa is not the church sitting on the sideline criticizing, but the church engaging. Amen. We believe in Christians, in politics, in political parties. Can you say amen? So I've met some wonderful people that are influential in changing our country. We have to pray over the next two, three months for this country. And then over the next two years, we have to pray, not criticize. We have to get involved. As many of you have got involved in the schools through legislation that was passed to challenge Christianity in schools. And I'm so proud of so many of you that got involved, principals in our church, and that are pushing back. Come on, because the church has to push back. Oh, come on, you can give a better clap than that. We're not going to let one man in Cape Town or Stellenbosch take prayer out of our schools. We're not going to let one man who has a bee in his bonnet challenge our Christian ethos and culture in our nation. As Christians, we will push back in the name of Jesus. Okay. We're not going to roll over. That's not what Dream Week is about. We, we're not raising up a bunch of... Uh, people that are going to roll over. So, so we respect your belief, but don't impose your belief on my children and tell my children they can't go to school with a Bible. Don't you come because you don't like Jesus still. 99% of people in school, they cannot worship Jesus in our schools. So we are going to push back. Somebody say push back. Amen. Good. We're not going to leave Dream Week in a coma. So uh, I get uh, letters from principals and people in education all the time. And I want to say we are proud of you. Um, obviously, we respect the Constitution. But there's provision in the Constitution that the school body can determine the religious ethos of the school. So you have to get involved in the school bodies and you have to get involved in making your voice heard to protect the next generation and not just be silent as Christians any longer. It was one woman that took prayer out of the schools of America. We are not going to allow one person to steal what God has for our future generations because God promised us revival in South Africa. Come on, God promised us revival among the young. Oh, come on, it's one young person. Just make the devil mad and give the Lord a crazy praise in this place. And then... Um, we are very honored to have the executive mayor of the city of Joburg, Mayor Herman Mashaba, and his beautiful wife, Connie. Will you please stand up, both of you? Come on. The great, successful business people are leading the city of Johannesburg. Thank you for being here tonight, both of you. We honor you and we salute you. Also, we want to thank you publicly for helping us approve our land and, and fast track the land so that we can build a sanctuary of hope for people in that area of Johannesburg. Thank you, sir. We honor you. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God for people that are in politics because they love the cause and not the title. So all you beautiful young people that God's raising up in politics or in ministry, know why you are going into politics in ministry. Really, it's not about you. It's about the people you can serve through the office. 
And then the Director General of Land Reform and Rural Development, Ms. Mrs. Leona Archery. Will you please stand, please? We honor you. Amen. Difficult job. God's wisdom for you. God's grace upon you as we embark on this journey to reform land and to build a beautiful South Africa where every person can have a hope and every person can have a dream. Come on. We all have the right to dream. No matter what your background, whether you're black, pink, yellow, white, we all have the right to dream in South Africa. Can you say amen? Thank you. And then, of course, our speaker in the previous session, Pastor Russell, we love you so much. You're such a great man of God. Thank you for not being a conformer, but for being a transformer, for changing our world and making our world a better place. You're an amazing man of God right here in Pretoria. Come on. And then there in um, Bloemfontein, Pastor Samuel Rodriguez. Um, last night he was outstanding. Yet, and, 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 and the first session in Bloemfontein, a big shout out to you and we salute you. Thank you for your ministry. Thank you for coming to South Africa. He was one of the three leaders that prayed for the, at the inauguration of uh, the President of the United States of America, leads the Latino community. So when we choose people to come to Dream Week, we choose people that not only preach a good message, but people that are relevant for the time we find ourselves in. The Bible is very clear that the sons of Issachar had understanding of the times. Some Christians, all they want to do is fly away to glory. All they think is about me, myself, and I. They don't discern the hour, the urgency of the hour. And we are the hope of the world. And the Bible is very clear, Isaiah 59 verse 19. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. You are the standard. You young people are the standard. You are our future. You are the hope of our tomorrow. You are our dream. You are the future generals. You are the future premiers. You are the future professors at university. You are our tomorrow. So you better not dream small. You better not think small. Don't allow anybody to intimidate you. You be everything that God says you can be. You be you and nothing less in the name of Jesus. And together, black and white, we are going to change South Africa and make South Africa a better place. Somebody shout, God bless South Africa. Come on. And then tonight, visiting in Bloemfontein, we have uh, Dr. Bill Wilson. Come on, everybody. We love uh, Dr. Bill Wilson. A big shout out to Dr. Bill, Bill Wilson. Oh, come on. Give him love there in Bloemfontein. Listen, I, I've had a cough all week, but I, I, I cough my voice back, cough my voice back, shout my voice back, shout my voice back, sing my voice back, away, sing my voice. I'm not going to get silent because Jesus said, if you don't shout out, the rocks will cry out. Every now and again, we can just go, we can just go crazy for Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, stand up there in front of your television set and upset everybody there in your neighborhood and give the Lord a shout of praise as a home cell. I feel the presence of God in this place. I feel the presence of God in this place. Yes, I'm a feel person. I'm a faith person, but I'm a feel person. I feel it when my wife walks into the room. I smell it when my wife walks into the room. I can feel the presence of God. And when God shows up, you cannot be the same. You will never be the same. So tonight's going to be off this wall. Take your, take, take, no, stand to your feet, everybody, as we introduce our speakers. Firstly, there in Bloemfontein, or let me first say to everybody in the overflow, uh, they are, the overflows in Pretoria, both of them are full. You know, uh, a big shout out to all of you that are willing to sit in rooms outside of this big room in Bloemfontein as well. Come on, let's make them all feel loved. I just want to tell you, we use technology... And I'm, I'm sorry that we never built this building big enough, but maybe if you give uh, money, uh, um, we can expand this building because we can. This building we can expand to a 9,000 seater so we can fill everybody in. And, uh, um, but I want to say that um, we appreciate you. You may sit in the overflow tonight, but you're not out of God's mind. In Luke chapter 5, Jesus was ministering. The place was full and nobody received anything. Then four friends came, broke open the wool from, from the roof, from the outside, and they made a demand on the presence of God. You went through the aggravation to get here tonight, the agitation of traffic, weather. You thought you were going to get a seat, and now you're sitting 
in a room somewhere and you feel maybe disconnected, please don't. I pray that tonight for you will be a very, very special night. I pray that the Holy Ghost will come into that room, that the presence of God will fall upon you. There in Bloemfontein as well in the overflow. And that you will have a special encounter with Jesus Christ tonight. So there in Bloemfontein tonight, I want you to stand to your feet and I want you to welcome one of the great teachers in the body of Christ. A great friend of mine, a great mentor, Pastor Rick Godwin, all the way from San Antonio. Come on, we love him. There in Bloemfontein, give a big shout out to Pastor Rick Godwin. Now to those gathered here in Pretoria. The first time in Pretoria, he's going to rock your world. He's going to change your world tonight, all the way from Chicago. Pastoring one of the greatest churches. You are going to love him. You are going to be blessed out of your socks. Put your hands together. From New Life Covenant Church, Pastor John Hanna. Come on, Pretoria, FBN. Wow! Wow! I flew from the United States to hear the praise in South Africa. I'm... I want to hear what praise sound like in South Africa. This is crazy. On your way to your seat, touch your neighbor and say, this is my week. Hey Amen. This is my week. Wow. 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 Um, wow. <laughs> Let me tell you what's crazy. So I was flipping through Instagram a couple of years ago, and I ran across a clip of this church. And they were leaping. They were... I said, Lord Jesus, I want to go to that church. Is God faithful? Is God faithful? <laughs> wow. This is crazy. Okay, calm down, John Hannah. So I honor the Lord for the man of God, the shepherd, the overseer of this house. Um, you know, I'm from Chicago. I grew up in Chicago's housing projects. I'm from the hood. And, um, you know, in the hood, when you have a radical person, you call them a G. Your pastor is a G. Your pastor is a G. You can be seated. I love it so much. You know, some of you all are quiet. You know, you're all passive. You're the ones that we call John the Beloved. You're the ones that just want to lay on Jesus' chest. But then you need to have some Peters at the table. <laughs> Amen. And we honor him for the work that he's doing to his family, to his wife to the staff, to God be the glory. Um, I am excited about being here, and I always pray about God, where am I going, and why are you sending me there? And it is amazing that God would send me while South Africa is in the midst of a turn. There's a shift. <laughs> if you have your Bibles, I want you to go to 1 Kings, the 18th chapter. And what's so amazing to me is that I asked um, what did Pastor Samuel preach last night? And he preached on Elijah. <laughs> so I know that I heard from the Lord. So I was like, okay, now what did he preach about? He preached about the mantle. So the Lord had spoke to me before I left Chicago and had given me this word to speak to you all on tonight. And it is in 1 Kings, the 18th chapter. And we're going again to speak on Elijah. <laughs> God is so funny to me. So let's just read here. 
Um, 1 Kings 18, verse 41. And Elijah said to Ahab, go eat and drink, for there is the sound of a heavy rain. In the King James, it says an abundance of rain. So Ahab went off to eat and drink, but Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel, bent down to the ground and put his face between his knees. Go, look towards the sea, he told his servant. And he went up and he looked. There's nothing there, he said. Seven times Elijah said, go back. The seventh time, the servant reported, ah, a cloud, as, a cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. So Elijah said, go tell Ahab, get ready. Hitch up your chariot, go down before the rain stops you. Meanwhile, the sky grew black with clouds, and the wind rose, and a heavy rain started falling, and Ahab rode off. Touch your neighbor, say, a new season. So as I said to you, I'm from Chicago and, you know, I'm from the hood. So let me just give you a couple of rules and regulations when you have an African-American pastor, okay? Rule number one, we touch our neighbors. Hmm? Um, we're not just telling you to touch your neighbor because the Bible says if you touch and agree on anything, he would do it. So we're not just telling you to just touch them, to touch them. Some of you all need a cosigner in the spirit. So when you touch somebody, their faith and your faith can make hell. Hmm. <laughs> Every now and then, because I'm a worship fanatic, I'll, if, I get, if I feel a word, I stop and put a stamp on it, and a stamp is a worship or a praise. So every now and then, you'll hear me say, stop, let's put a worship on it. That means lift your hands and go in. in. You don't need a praise team to go in. Just go in. So here we are. We're going to look at this prophet by the name of Elijah. Many of you all think that people that are used by God are perfect. I want you to hear me clearly. Isn't it amazing how God chooses people that have issues? If you study the scriptures, the Bible will let you know that Elijah has three issues. Number one, he has a relational issue. What do you mean by that? He doesn't run with people like that. He really doesn't like to be bothered with people. How can you be called to be a voice for God, but you don't like to deal with people? Please listen. If you even study when he went and got Elijah, he would tell Elijah, you stay here while I go there. Many of you all, you are like Elijah. You, you don't rock with people like that. Your friends are very few, but the hand of God is still on your life, and he still has a calling on your life. Number two, his other issue is that he had a social issue. If you study, he didn't hang around in the city. Elisha was involved in government and in the city, but Elijah spent most of his time in the wilderness. Wilderness is good for some of you all, because many of you all, you only get a worship on in the city, but wilderness people have learned how to praise God by themselves. They don't need a praise team. They don't need a band. All they do is just think about how good God has been to them and automatically a praise can come up. The third thing that we know about Elijah, listen to this, is that he has emotional issues. What do you mean? If you really study that, Elijah struggled with depression. If you study the scripture, the Bible says that when he became afraid of Jezebel, he ran off and sank emotionally. The Bible says that he was asleep. When you sleep a lot, that is a sign of depression. The Bible says that an angel said, Elijah, you have to wake up. The third thing that he didn't do is that he did not eat. He wasn't eating. The angel had to make him get up and eat. Then finally, he went into a cave, and in the cave by himself, he stepped out, and God asked a question, Elijah, what are you doing here? For some of you all in this building, you have social issues, you have emotional issues, but let the record reflect that God's hand is still on your life. The Bible says, moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, which means that God calls you knowing ye, that you have issues. God has a way of looking at your future and not your present. Mm. And what he's going to do in your life is going to be mind-blowing. I need you to just warn the person next to you, your life is going to be amazing. 
Come on, I need you to speak that over them. Say, your life is going to be amazing. So now let's go into the city. In the city, there's a king by the name of Ahab. Ahab is known to be a weak king, but he sees a girl that is not part of God's children. She's not an Israelite. Her name is Jezebel. She's not a church girl. She's one of the street girls. He's a church boy. He's been raised in church. But he steps outside the church and spots a girl by the name of Jezebel. Oh, shuck it now. Jezebel don't look like a church girl. Jezebel don't act like a church girl. Jezebel does not even worship the same God that Ahab worships. But nevertheless, he enters into relationship with somebody who he's not equal to. Many of you all need to be careful with who you date. You cannot date anybody that does not worship the same God you worship, does not praise the same God you praise, does not shout the way you shout. If you brought them here tonight, they in for a rude awakening. <laughs> so he enters into relationship with, Je with Jezebel. Listen carefully. And eventually he tears down the altar of God. Please hear me. When you date the wrong people they can affect your worship he literally tore down the worship the altar of God and Jezebel began to build her altar listen carefully the weaker one always takes on the personality traits of the stronger one I'm gonna say that again the weaker ones always takes on the personalities of the stronger ones. So God releases judgment because they're not worshiping. They're not praising. They're not seeking him. They're seeking the other God. For many of you all, God has held some things up because your worship is not on the same level that it used to be on. Your seek is not on the same level that it used to be on. Your passion is not on the same level that it used to be on. So the Bible says that God raises up Elijah, has him to walk up to the palace door, knock on the door, and release a word. If you have your Bibles, let's look again. In other words, Elijah has to speak it. Please look at this. In 1 Kings 17 and 1, he says, As the Lord, the God of Israel, lives, whom I serve, there will neither be dew nor rain in the next few years. Here's the line that messed me up. Except at my word. Which, in other words, God is using me to the point that when I speak, some things can be held up. Mm. Which means that when I speak, some things can be released. You need some people like that in your section so they can say, God bless my whole section. And because they ask for it, God do it for you. I want you to make sure <laughs> you need people like that. When they speak, they speak with power. When they speak, they speak with authority. When they speak, they speak what thus saith the Lord. Ha! Do me a favor, touch your neighbor, and say the rest of this year is going to be better than the previous nine months. Oh, you missed that. The rest of this year is going to be better than the previous nine months, which means that October, November, December is going to be better than January, February, March, April. Have a seat. He speaks it. He said, it's not going to rain except at my word. In other words, he calls a drought. Please listen. This drought is not to kill you, but to show you another side of God. This drought, what you're going through now, is not to take you out. It's for you to see a side of God that you've never seen before. Uh, come on, let's talk for a minute. So then he has to survive it. For everybody under the sound of my voice, please listen. You are a survivor. You gotta hear me. You, ha you have to hear me. I don't care what you're going through now. You, my brother and my sister, you are a survivor. 
if half the people in this building have gone through what you've gone through, they would have been crazy or in a mental institution. But the fact that you've made it through half the things that you've gone through, you are a survivor. Quitting is not an option. The same God that did it then is going to do it. <laughs> Hallelujah. All the survivors, lift your hands in this building. Open your mouths in worship. <laughs> You just have to make it through this right now. You have to make it past your right now. You have to make it past your right now. You have to make it past your right now. You're experiencing a drought in your home. You're experiencing a drought in your finances. You're experiencing a drought in your business. You're experiencing a drought in your marriage. You're experiencing a drought in your body. Body. You're experiencing a drought in your joy. You're experiencing a drought in your, in your peace. But I came to let you know what you have coming is going to be amazing. You are a survivor. Come on, y'all, for five more seconds, worship. Five. Four. Three. Two, he ran down a massa. One, he ran a mossy. He key on that a basaya. Have a seat, have a seat, have a seat, have a seat, have a seat. Now let's see how he survives it. Let's see how he survives it. Number one, let's go. He, he survives it with just between him and God. He just survives it between him and God. And for some of you, all God is taking you through a season that is just the two of you. Just the two of you. He won't let anybody else bless you. He won't let anybody else counsel you. It's just the two of you. What do you mean by that? If you look at the screen, let's go. In the fourth verse, he says, he says this. He says, you will drink from the brook, and I have directed the ravens to feed you with food there. In other words, I'm going to take you to a brook that nobody else will drink from, which means that you will be the only one drinking from this brook. And I've commanded so that you know that it is God. I've commanded what shouldn't feed you to hook you up. Mm. A raven? A bird that eat everything has been told to drop something off to you. Mm. He says, listen, this is only between him and God. And for many of you all, was how you've made it thus far has been between you and God. God has encouraged you in the morning. God has met all of your needs. God has been your best friend during this season. God has woke you up in the midnight hour. God God has spoken to you through dreams. God has done some amazing things for you. And you are surviving it. You're not dying. You're surviving it. Then the Bible says, and then the brook ran dry. How would God lead you someplace and then let it dry up? I mean, the birds are still dropping our food, but I ain't got no water. Whenever something stops, that means it's time for a shift. The same God that did that is about to do something else. Now, I want you to listen. If you could bring the scripture up. The Bible says that he tells Elijah, I need you to go. I've commanded a widow to hook you up. Please listen, Cal. I need you to really listen to me now. He's a prophet. Why would God send me to a widow? A widow is considered to be the, the poor, uh, the, most, the most poor. Nobody ever asked a widow for anything. But I'm going to send a man of God, a prophet, to hook him up with somebody who he least expects. I'm not going to send you to anybody that's of your race. I'm not going to send you to anybody that's of your color. I'm not going to send you to anybody that's of your economical status. I'm not going to send you to anybody that's part of your clique or your organization. But I'm about to hook you up. Yeah. 
Some of y'all, you keep looking for the preacher. You keep looking for the teacher. You keep looking for the apostle. You keep looking for the preacher. You keep looking for the pastor. But can I tell you something? The one right next to you might be your hookup. You playing the one next to you like they a cheeseburger, but they a Big Mac in the spirit. I need you to make sure you sit next to somebody that got something. Touch your name and say, God's about to do something for us. Hold on. Now, this is good. Listen. He sends him to a widow. He sends him to a widow. The widow meets him there. He said, go get me some water. She's going to get the water. He said, oh, and by the way, bring me a cake. <laughs> some of you all, God's going to put you around people that's going to put a demand on you. The only way that you're going to know that God can do it is that he will surround you with people that put a demand on you. You got to hear me. Ready? She turns around and says, I don't have it. <laughs> All I got is some flour and some oil. Now watch this, watch this. And she says, I'm going to bake this last cake, and me and my son are going to eat and die. You ready? She doesn't have faith. All she has is oil and flour. You don't need faith. I came with faith. You have the ingredients, I got faith. Mix my faith with your ingredients, we both... Some of y'all are looking for people that have the same thing that you have. But if you might be sitting next to somebody, I got faith, you got a praise. I believe God, you got an issue. Let's hook up together. Oh, I wish you could... I need to see if you next to somebody. Wait, 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 wait. Let me calm down. Let me calm down. I'm sorry. Have a seat. Calm down, John. I got to calm down. All she has is ingredients. All I need you to do is bake the cake, boo. Bake the cake. Bake the cake, Eddie Mae. Bake the cake. She bakes the cake. He said, now release it. If you release it, then not only will you get a miracle, but I'll get a miracle. See, when you hook up with the right people, you can't hook up with stingy people. You can't hook up with people who just sitting in church with their arms folded. You got to be next to somebody say, I got to praise, you got to praise. We got to praise. I got to praise, you got to praise. We got to praise. I got to praise, you got to praise. We got to praise. I got to praise. I need you to find somebody in your section that's willing to release what they have. If you got a hallelujah, you got to open your mouth. If you got a glory, you have to open your mouth. Our miracle is going to be in what you release. On the count of three, release your praise. One, two, three. Glory. Come on, release. Come on, release. God's supplying some things right now. God's meeting some needs right now. Lift your hands, open your mouths, and worship for 10 seconds. Release. 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 Come on, 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 release. There's a blessing in our connection. There's a blessing in our connection. There's a blessing in our connection. There's a blessing that we met. There's a blessing that we sit next to each other. I just need you to release. Come on, guys. Ten more seconds. Release. Ten. We thank you. We honor you. Nine. We give you glory for what you've already done. Eight. We thank you that a new season is coming. Seven, we give you glory. We give you glory. Six, five, we're not next to each other. Just to be next to each other. But God has connected us. Four, three, 
two, one. Get on my Be seated. Yeah, down the low sea. In our Messiah. Hallelujah. It's over. The Bible says for three years there was a drought. For three years. The Lord sent me from Chicago to come to South Africa to speak to you and to make you open your mouth and declare that your drought is over. He's about to fix your house. He's about to elevate you in politics. He's about to bless your business. He's about to bless your ministry. Everything you lack is about to come full circle. Hallelujah! 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 On your way to your seat, just say it's over, it's over. It's over, it's over, the drought is 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 over. Finally, in the 18th chapter, the first verse, he has to close he, the same way he spoke and said, except that my word, it won't rain. Now I have to speak for it to now be released. And the Bible says he literally declared that this season of drought was about to be over, which means that there's about to be a new season. I need you to hear me. Seasons change. When seasons change, it is imperative that you change. You don't wear a winter coat in the summer months. You change. And for some of you all, he's about to put a demand on you for change. The Bible says that he literally says in 18.1, after a long time, in, three, in, in the third year, the word of the Lord came to, to John Hannah. I'm sorry, the word of the Lord came to Elijah. The word of the Lord came to John Hannah. The word of the Lord came to John Hannah and told him to go to South Africa and told him to go to South Africa and told him to go to South Africa and told, the word of the Lord came to John Hannah and said, go present yourself and say, I will send rain in the land. I'm about to turn South Africa around. I'm about to do some amazing things. I'm about to shift this whole environment. I'm about to change your city. I'm about to change your country. I'm about to change your community. I'm about to change your church. I'm about to change your house. I'm about to change your schools. I'm about to change your, your politics. Oh, Bashato Rabashe. I'm about to shift some things. I'm about to make the poor wealthy. I'm about to make. Ah! Those that lack are about to be included. I. So how does it start? How does it start, guys? How do, once God says it, how does it start? Number one, you, those of you that lack, you have to hear it. You have to, listen, this is, this is where you have to shift out of the natural. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. You have to go out of the natural and say, speak, Lord. Thy servant heareth. And for some of y'all, God's been waking you up. You don't even get a full night's sleep because God is waking you up trying to speak to you to let you know that change is coming. You're getting up, getting on Facebook, put the phone down, say, speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. You, you have to hear it. You ready? You got to hear it. Look what he says. Look at the screen. Look at the screen. He says, he says in verse 41, he says, he says there is a sound. It's not even raining yet, but I hear a sound. The sky is clear, but I know what I hear. I hear a sound. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I came from the United States to say, oh, ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain coming in this direction. 
I hear a sound that, that God is about to do something amazing in this side of the earth. I hear a sound that what you lack, God's about to bring increase. I hear it. I hear it. I need those of you that hear it. Listen, I'm not talking about your flesh. I'm talking about your spirit. Because when I speak it, your spirit begin to leap. I need those of you that hear it. Open your mouths and worship. I hear it. The drought is over. The drought is over. The drought is over. The drought is over. New season. Have a seat. New season. New season. New season. The drought is over. 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 New season. New season. New season. New season. The drought is over. The drought is over. The drought is over. What you lacked, you about to get. What you lacked, you about to get. What you lacked, you about to get. What you didn't have, you're about to have. What you would, ah! The drought is over, the drought is over, the drought is over, the drought is over. You hear me? Do you hear me? The drought is over, do you hear me? Do you hear me? The drought is over, the drought is over. Somebody might be hard of hearing. I need you to shout three times in this building. The drought is over. Say it, the drought is over, the drought is over, the drought is over. Love is about to come to my house. Peace is about to come to my house. Joy is about to be released in my spirit. The anointing is about to be increased over me. Wealth is about to be poured out on me. Wisdom is about to be released on me. Revelation is coming in my direction. The drought is over. 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 Have a seat. The drought is over. The drought is over. So first things first, you got to hear it. You have 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 to hear it. He that has an ear, hear what the Spirit is saying. Don't get comfortable in your now because your tomorrow is about to be amazing. The drought is over. The drought is over. The drought is over. The drought is over. I sent you to this conference to let you know that the drought is over. You're not here by chance or by accident. You are, this is divine. And the God has sent you in this building. If you be in the building or if you be in overflow, you hear me loud and clear that the drought is over. So once you hear it, it first starts by hearing it. Then after you hear it, you have to, you have to speak it. It has to come out of your mouth. It has to come out of your mouth. You have to speak what you heard. If you don't speak it, then it won't happen. But if you open your mouth and speak it, then it happens. Oh, what do you mean by that? What do you mean that? Listen to me. The Bible says that Samuel, Samuel had such an anointing that when he spoke, listen to what the Bible says. The Bible said, whatever Samuel spoke, his words never hit the ground. In other words, what he spoke, his words took legs and just start walking it out. Which means that when you speak, and some of y'all, you have not been speaking positive. You've been speaking facts. You've only been speaking what you see. Facts is the enemy of faith. <laughs> your facts are the enemy of faith because we walk by faith and not by s come on here I need you to open I'm, I'm going to show you the scripture that blessed me because some of you I want you to be very careful after this conference of what you let come out of your mouth I need you to be really really careful about what you let come out of your mouth I'm going to show you the scripture in, in, um, when the children of Israel were in the wilderness and God said he told Moses he said go and tell Pharaoh let my people go so that they can worship me in the wilderness let them go because I need to hear them worship in the wilderness listen to me not in the promised land in the wilderness <laughs> Set my people free so they can worship. Anybody can worship when you get to the promised land. But it's a, it's a special person that can worship in between. He said, let my people go. So when they didn't have water, they started complaining. I can't believe you brought us out here for us to starve, to, to, not, to die of thirst. Then he, he, he gave them water. Then they didn't have anything to eat. I can't believe you brought us out here and now you're going to let us starve to death. When we was in Egypt, we had a lot to eat. And finally, God said something. Look at the screen. This is how come you have to speak tonight. In, in Numbers 14 and 28, this is my scripture. So tell them, as surely as I live, declares the Lord, I will do to you the very thing I heard you say. Shut up. 
I will do for you the very thing I heard you say. I need those of you in this building to get ready to open your mouth and start declaring some stuff. I need you to open your mouth and say, my marriage is the best marriage on earth. I love my wife more than I've ever loved any woman in the world. My kids are going to graduate. They're going to college. As a matter of fact, they're going to get scholarships and fellowships. My church is the bomb. Jesus is in my church. The anointing is so high that I, blinded eyes are being opened and bodies are being healed. I'm going to be one of the top givers in my church. I might not have any money right now, but let me tell you about my future. I am a millionaire. I wish I could get you to open your mouth and begin to receive. Release, say something, say something. I'm going to give you exactly what I heard you say. You tell me what you want these last three months to be in your life. You tell me what you want these last three months to be in your life. You want me to take your name and drop it off in the right people? You want me to take you places that you've never been before? You want me to increase your, your wisdom, your anointing? I want to release your name in the spirit realm. I want everybody in this building, when I count to three, I want you to release your name and I want you to put a tag on it and say before the year is out. I need you to put something on that thing, but I need it to come out of your mouth. He heard it, then he spoke it. On the count of three, say your name. One, two, three. John Hannah! <laughs> Come on, I'm gonna give you another chance. I'm gonna give you another chance. I'm gonna give you another chance to release it. And for some of y'all, need you to tell God what you want them to do. What you want? You want them in your house? You want them in your finance? You want them in your body? You want them to give you favor when it comes to politics? You want them to bless your ministry? You want them to bless your children? You want them to bless everything that you touch? Wherever He puts you, you want God to be with you? I want you to say what God wants you to do. I want you to open your mouth and release your name again in the Spirit. And I want you to tell God before the year is out, let's put a deadline on this thing. Before the year is out. Come on, y'all, please. I need you to open your mouth again. On the count of three, say your name. One, two, three. Sean Hannah! You hear it. You speak it. Everyone stand. And then you start. Can you give me a cordless mic? Can you give me a cordless mic? Another mic. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I want to give Pastor Ed a mic. And what am I, why am I giving? Because the Bible says that Elijah, he finally, after he heard it, he said it, and then he went on the mountaintop and got ready. For some of y'all, you can't wait. You're going to have to dive in immediately. Can you? Okay. So the Bible says, and why am, I, why am I giving it to him? Because I believe that he has um, power when he speaks. And some of y'all, I want you to listen. The Bible says that Elijah got down on his knees. He never looked towards the sky, but he made sure that he took someone that was with him that would not discourage him. Some of y'all, you have the wrong circle around you. <laughs> so... Six times, you're going to have to say, I see nothing. But it's not what you say, it's how you say it. Because the predicated upon how you say it, you can discourage me. And some of y'all, you got people like, look, you need to get up because nothing's coming, okay? Touch your neighbor and say, if that's you, please shut up. That's not you. It's not you. I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. Pastor, can you tell me what you see? I see nothing. Hallelujah, I know what I heard. Hallelujah, I know what I heard. Hallelujah, I know what I heard. And I praise you in advance for what I know I heard. I spoke what I heard, so I believe that I'm going to see what I said. Tell me, Pastor, what do you see? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Well, I want to really tell you what I see, but 
I see nothing. Okay, <laughs> hallelujah, I still believe God. I still believe God. I still believe God. I know what I heard. 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 I know what I heard, and I am not going to change my confession. 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 Tell me, what do you hear? It's your third time. Go ahead. I see nothing. Hallelujah! 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 Why are you going harder? Because every now and then discouragement tries to set in. Right. But the yeah. moment that the enemy comes in heavier, you need to take your praise to the next level. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Tell me, Pastor, what do you see? I still see nothing. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. That was five times. Number six, what do you see? I see absolutely nothing. Glory! Glory! The seventh time he sent him back. He said, now I see something, but it doesn't match what you heard. What do you see? I see a cloud the size of a man's hand. Okay. You see that means that you need to start getting ready for the rain. Get you ready for the rain tonight. I came to let you know that God's about to do something amazing. I came to let you know that God's about to perform a miracle in your house. Are you ready for the rain? Are you ready for the rain? To some people, you look stupid, but it doesn't matter what you think. I know what I heard. I know what I heard. I said what I heard. Now I'm about to see what I said. Lift your hands and worship God for 10 seconds. Get ready. Get ready to shift. Get ready to shift. Get ready to shift. Get ready to shift. Your house is about to shift. Your career is about to shift. Your ministry is about to shift. Your government is about to shift. Your church is about to shift. Your finances are about to shift. Your revelation in the word of God is about to shift. He sent me all the way from Chicago and he even let it rain on today to let me know what's about to happen in South Africa. Are you ready? Who did I come to get tonight? Who did I come to get? Because you don't see anything. But you know what you heard. But I don't see any changes yet. But I know what God told me. I know what God promised me. God is not a man that he can lie. Neither the son of man that he can repent. If he said it, who did I come to get tonight? You're in this building. And it's been rough lately. And you almost walked away. You almost threw in the towel. I came to get you tonight. If I be a man of God, he's about to reign in this place. 
the glory's coming 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 the glory coming the glory cloud the glory cloud the glory cloud is about to encourage everybody that is in this building the glory cloud is about to be released over everybody in this building if you know that I am talking to you and you know what you heard you said it You've seen some change. Now it's time for you to prepare for it. If you know that I am talking to you, get out of your seat and meet me on the altar right now. Move, 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 move. Get out. Yay! Glory! The glory is coming. 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 I know what you heard. You said what you heard. Now it's time to see what you said. The glory is coming. The glory is coming. Randarabashaya, he wrote to Rebeshe, who ran down Ramasate, Loco Rebeshe, he ran down Ramasaya, he wrote to Rebe. You've some of y'all been praying for revival. Revival is now. Revival is now. You don't have to wait on revival. Revival starts with us in this building. He wrote to Rebe on Bahaya. The revival is now. He wrote to Bosaya. I want us to see a difference in the spirit realm in these last three months. I came, I came, I came, I came, I came, I came, I want you to listen to me. For somebody in the building, this is your reminder that he's going to do exactly what he told you. I need you to lift your hands and just say, I believe God, I believe God, I believe. Can I have a transparent moment for one minute? Everybody listen. From the moment I got off the plane, I kept saying, I know you have me here to preach, but there's something that you want to tell me. And years ago, I used to have a vision of a church similar to this size with multiple races in the building. Yes, my church is big, but it's not the vision. Don't settle for what you did not see. Don't settle for good when he promised you great. Good is the enemy of great. Don't settle. So I kept, I kept, I kept asking God, okay, what do you have for me? 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 Sometimes I begin to feel like I was by myself because I don't want position. I don't want title. I don't want fame. I just want the glory of God and I just want to see his people blessed. And I know that my heartbeat is different from other people. But God brought me to you, Pastor. God brought me to you to remind me that we have a similar heartbeat. God sent me here to remind me, don't change your heartbeat to try to fit in with other people. Keep the heartbeat of Jesus. Keep the heartbeat of going after the lost. Keep the heartbeat of getting among the people. Don't don't try to be a superstar. Don't try to be famous. Only seek my glory. The glory's coming. So tonight, as I am in this rain suit, he brought my vision back. He said, what did I show you? I showed you this. 
And I don't care who leave you, who walk away. You always know that I am going to complete what I started. Lift your hands in this building. The glory cloud is about to fall heavy in this building. He's about to remind you of what he told you. He's about to give you proof that he is with you. For somebody, by the time you go home, you will see a change in your situation. It might not be a big change, but it's going to be the size of a hand to remind you that God has not forgotten about you. If he said it, do me this favor. Close your eyes and just worship for one minute. Close your eyes. And in between your worship, just say, I believe God. That is who you are, way maker. That is who you are, way maker. Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Jesus. We call him way maker, miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Come on, I need you to say that. Everybody say way maker, miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God. That is you are. You just said five things about him. Let's go. Let's go, say. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you Come on, I need you to say that to the Lord. God's going to do exactly what he say. Waymaker. Come on, I need you to say that. I need you to open your mouth and say that. Come on, say. Come on, one more time. Everybody open your mouth and say. I believe God. I believe God. One more time, we're going to stop. One more time, everybody say. Reach over, just grab a nigga by the hand. Everything you need is in the glory. Pastor has been saying something that all you need is a one glory encounter and it will change your life forever. Tonight, God's about to reveal his glory right now in this building. Come on, don't get scared. Don't pull back. I need you to dive in. The glory of God. The glory of God. You heard it. You said it, now it's time for you to see it. You heard it, 
You said it. Now it is time for you to see it. You're going to see it in your home. You're going to see it in your ministry, on your job, in your finances, in your family, in your body, in every area of your life. Hold that hand. We're about to call the glory of God in this building. When you feel the glory of God, when you know that God is on you, I need you to give him everything you have. On the count of three, everybody shout glory. You cannot hold back. We need the glory of God at this conference. We don't just come to a conference just to come, but we come to encounter the glory of God, the cloud of God. One, two, three. Go. Receive the glory. Let that hand go and go on your own. Receive it. Receive it. Get your faith back. You're going to see it. You're going to see it. Cut the music, nothing but voices. Let me hear you worship. Let me hear you worship. Nothing but voices, no music. You heard it? You said it. Now you're going to see it. You heard it? You said it, and now you see it. Stay there. I have to give an altar call for the loss. Those of you all that are already saved on the altar, I want you to go back to your seat. Listen to me. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord, and today you realize that you need to be under the cloud of God, you stay at the altar. On your way back to your seat, I need you to tell someone, new season, 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 new season. New season. New season, new season, new season, new season, new season. Leave them on the floor. If they're on the floor, leave them there. New season. As you go back to your seat, you can worship where you are. New season, new season. Leave them there. Leave them there. They're fine. Leave them on the floor. They're fine. As they go back to their seat, I want you to hear me. There's some of you in this building. Today is the day for you to step into the cloud. You got to hear me. If you don't know the Lord as your Savior, I don't care if you're singing, dancing, or shouting, you won't make it. You have to hear me. For some of you in this building, I accepted Christ at the age of 17. I am now 53 years old. I didn't find him, he found me. I didn't go get myself together and then try to come back and present myself. I came to him just as I was. There are quite a few in this building. He doesn't want you to fix anything. He wants you to come just the way you are. He wants you to come with all of your issues. He wants you to come with all of your habits. He wants you to come with all your stuff. Because that's what he came to get today. There's a scripture that says, I found you polluted in your own blood. I washed you. And I told you to live. There's some individuals in the building that you've been wrestling with depression. You've been wrestling with thoughts of suicide. The enemy has done everything he could to stop you from making it to just today. Because he knew that today, your life would never be the same. Today is about to be your birthday.
if you know that I am talking to you and you are ready, he said, he said, listen to this. He said, I come that you might have life. You have not lived until you tried Jesus. If you know I am talking to you, get out of your seat and meet me. Right, I'm coming down. You're going to come right where I am. Get up. Let's go. Let's go. Today is your birthday. If you brought a friend and you know they need Jesus, bring them right here to this altar. Say, let's go. You come just uh, saying, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come now. that are here on the altar sometimes we as church people we make salvation sound so difficult he said and thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God is raising from the dead you're saved it's a matter of opening your mouth and asking for forgiveness and inviting him in when I got saved I left church I walked home went in my bedroom got down on my knees and I said, Lord Jesus, I need you to come into my life and to be my savior. This is the prayer that no one can pray for you, that you have to open your mouth and confess him as your Lord and your savior. Come on, let's say it with them. Everyone repeat after me, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I come to you just as I am. And I realize that I am a mess and I need you to be my savior. I believe that you came to earth and died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the grave. I ask that you forgive me of all my sins and that you come into my life. Come on, lift your hands and say this part. Say, by faith. I accept you as my Lord and my Savior. And by faith, 
I am saved. Say, I am saved. If you believe that, release a praise right there. <laughs> if you stand there, if you stand there, um, I'm going to bring Pastor at to give you instructions. For those of you all, I, I leave tomorrow. I have one more session tomorrow morning. Um, <laughs> For those of you all that are coming tomorrow morning, I want you to come with your prayer list. I want you to literally write out what you want God to do for you. Um, I do a 4 a.m. prayer meeting twice a month in Chicago. And there are about seven to 800 people that come to prayer at 4 a.m. And the Lord told me to go into prayer with you all over your requests because God's about to do something amazing tomorrow. Come on, let's say a big, big, big thank you to Pastor John. Come on, love you. Come on, how amazing was it? Somebody shout, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. You know, it's, uh, I had to go along with, what do, you, what do you say I have to see? I say nothing, I, I really can't say that. Uh, I'm going to rectify it the first time I preach, okay, because I absolutely don't see nothing. I see too much. So, uh, but that's a whole other story. I tell you, listen, listen, this conference is about a new season and a new anointing. God is positioning people at a new season and a new anointing, and you better get ready during this conference. Come on, how many of you have seen that? A new season and a new anointing. You're going to go back wherever you come from with a new season and a new anointing. And thing that, things that took many years are going are, 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 are to take months. The next three months, come on. The next three months, come on. The next three months. Oh, come on, you better believe it and not be a cynic. You, you've got to believe it. You've got to believe the prophetic word when it comes. The drought is over. Say it again tonight. The drought is is over. Say it again. The drought is over. Say it again. The drought is over. You've got to go back to your church on Sunday, Pastor, and say the drought is over and not find a reason for a drought. Go to Cape Town and say the drought is over. Go to your business and say the drought is over. Go to your husband and say, the drought is over. Go to your bedroom. Go to your dog. Go wherever. But you've got the words of life and you need to discern the word that God gives you. It's like a puzzle, this whole conference, all fitting together. And I'm hugely excited. There is like, I mean, my spirit is, it's, uh, I say to people, people in our church know that since June last year, it's like God's been working with me on a whole nother level. The last time I found that was when I just got saved and God anointed me for the ministry. It's like God is calling people, not religiously, to a whole nother level of separation in Him because of God wants to position you and anoint you for what is ahead of you. And the first point He, he, he spoke about tonight is there are certain places only you and God can go. And many of you, 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 you haven't gone there yet. And if this whole conference is to get your attention, to say to you, you have to go to that place that is reserved for you and God alone, not a prophet. You're not going to conquer or, or come out of that valley until you get out of your cave and you go back to the mountaintop and you, you meet God on another level in your drought. I mean, God, God, is, he, 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 God is not a secret. But it's a secret to those who do not pursue Him. So even in the Old Testament, people had the same problem. They say to Moses, don't let God talk to us. Let God talk to you, then you talk to us. And in the New Covenant, God says, no, no, I'm not going to talk to my people through a man. I'll use a man to activate my people, to get them into my presence, so that they can hear the voice, my voice for themselves. And... And that is the key to your future. 
pastors that are, 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 are fighting for breakthrough, and you've tried everything, businessmen fighting for breakthrough. And that drought is so that God can reveal Himself to you on a whole nother level. But you have to pull back, and you have to go discover God. And, 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 and you know, when you hear, when you hear, everything changes. It doesn't matter what you see in the natural. I pray that you hear. I pray that you leave this conference having heard what God said tonight to your spirit. I pray that no matter how impossible your situation, how big your giant, that you would have heard God tonight and that you will go face your future knowing the drought is over. Say it one more time. Come on, say. Come on, daar Afrikaans van aan, sê die droogte is voorbij. Amen. Amen. Let's say a big God bless you again to Pastor John Hannah. What an amazing word. What an amazing. Only one day left. All you beautiful people that came to the altar, please. Can we put a Bible in your hands? Can we pray for you? We love you. We care about you. We are so grateful that you came tonight. And we honor you for your courage to make a public profession of your faith tonight. So we cheer you on. We stand with you. So before you go home tonight, please, if you will all turn to my right, your left, we want to say a prayer with you, give you a Bible, and encourage you in this journey that you've chosen tonight. Come on, everybody, if you will turn to my right, your left, let's give them a big, big, big God bless you. Come on, everybody, this way. Hallelujah. If you brought your friend, go with your friend. Kom aan, grijp jou broer daar langs, jou skit jou broer vanavond, sê vir jou broer, jou droogte is voorbij. Jou droogte is voorbij. Jou droogte is voorbij. Skit jou vrou vanavond en sê, liefie, ons droogte is voorbij. So na somme, in Jesus naam, grijp jou man daar so. Ons droogte is voorbij. Die droogte is voorbij. Kom nou man. Jy kan glo wat jy wil. Of jy kan een wonderkind wees vir die rest van jou lewe. Amen. Good things are heading your way. Every setback is a set up by God for greater things. Amen. So take your seat as you are perfectly positioned to be very generous with the offering tonight. So watch the screen. Then Pastor Russell is going to come and receive the offering. Thank you. Hi there family, this is day three of Dream Week 2017. We hope that you've been blessed so far as much as we've been blessed, Ange. Yes, Tiddy, we have been blessed out of our socks, but family, it is not over. We still have one more day left of Dream Week 2017. So take a look at some of our awesome highlights. We're going to run for Christ, but the world is never going to be the same again because of what has happened today in CRC at Dream Week 2017. I can just give glory to God and thank Pastors Atten and Retabosa for this amazing conference. Tomorrow morning, we will start with dynamic praise and worship at 9 a.m., followed by our first and second session. We will then have a lunch break and conclude our morning sessions at 11.50. Our evening sessions will kick off at 5.30 p.m. We're alive, we're running, we're set free, set free. Stepping out of the darkness, we're set free. Come on, everybody, down! Whoa, 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 whoa.
inside of me and that's something he's still in me it's called the presence and the person and the power and the fire of the holy ghost come on somebody just give god a praise in jesus name hallelujah Elijah, maybe there's a theme there. In drought, what is precious? Water. So when Elijah went up to Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal were there and they could try to call down fire, what is the first thing that Elijah did is he rebuilt the altar. Tonight, that's what we've done in our worship. We're rebuilding the altar. That's what we've done in responding. We rebuilt the altar. Then he put a sacrifice on there. But then what did he do? He poured what was precious on the altar. The most precious thing in drought is water. And he just didn't pour one bucket or two buckets or three buckets. He just kept pouring buckets on in drought. It was worse than a, a five drought, whatever you call it. It was worse than any drought for three years. And the very thing that was precious to break the drought was they poured on what was precious to them. So tonight, you know what represents our life many times is our finances. It represents our energy. It represents our holidays. It represents what we buy. It represents what we eat. It's precious to us. So to see a drought broken you got to sow what's precious to you. And when you sow what's precious to you, you open up the atmosphere to release God, to pour out what's precious to Him. That's to bless His children in abundance. So tonight, let's not just scream about the abundance of rain. Let's not just dance about the abundance of rain. I love doing all that. But let's sow what is precious to us so that we can see an abundance of rain. So tonight I want to encourage you, give like we've never given before. You know, every revival always has a spirit of ridiculous generosity, every revival, and this is a revival. So let's go beyond what we've ever seen before and prophesy into the future. Prophesy by giving what is precious to us and let's see God's name be made famous on this earth in Jesus' name. And everyone with faith said, as we're going to give, we have an item and it's called, He's Never Failed Me Yet by Shanae. Hello, Shanae. Go sing with all your heart and let's give with all our heart. God bless you. When I was a child, I did childish things. My life was church and all it brings. I'd always hear the old folks sing, He's never failed me yet. I heard this phrase and I trusted so that one day I would come to know the truth in which these words do flow. He's never failed me yet.
With years of life came tested trials And nights when tears replaced the smiles Though God was right there all the while My soul was not at rest But I live to tell that I made it through So instead of singing about the blues I bring you news to encourage you He's never failed me yet. When clouds and the valleys come, set your eyes on the risen sun. Whoa. Pray the eyes of your heart be filled with light and watch the blessing. never failed us yet. Hallelujah. Let's pray over the offering. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name for your goodness. Thank you for the opportunity to give. Thank you for the opportunity to expand this, your precious kingdom. We honor you and we bless you. And even as we leave tonight, we're reminded, Father, that the drought is over. Thank you, Father, that we will hear, we will speak it, and we will see it in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen and amen. God bless you. Have a fantastic evening. We'll see you tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock, bright and early. God bless you.